The Rhino Motion Controller is designed for both live motion and time-lapse camera moves. Let's walk through the options available in each of the time-lapse menus. Here we see two modes, and both of these will move the camera slowly from one end of the slider to the other, but the big difference is that advanced time-lapse will also trigger the camera's shutter, so you don't need an external or internal intervalometer. The shutter will be fired by Rhino Motion itself. Let's hop into simple time lapse. We calibrate. And inside simple time lapse, we see that we have distance, direction, time, and ramp. Distance is how far the camera will move, while direction says which end of the slider the camera will start on. Time is how long the movement should take. And the ramp is starting and ending the movement gradually. So if we want to ramp up slowly and then ramp down at the end, we add a ramp here. So with these settings, let's hit start and the camera moves to its first position. Now we start the camera recording. You may be using an intervalometer, which it could be built into your camera or an accessory, or you might shoot video and fast forward the video in post. But however you want to start your camera recording, let's start that now. And then we hit go and our move begins. We can pause the move at any time by pressing the wheel and we cancel the move by hitting the back button to return to the menu. Advanced time lapse uses the Rhino Motion controller to trigger the shutter of the camera. This adds a little bit of complexity, but it keeps everything in one place so we can program our move and our images all from the Rhino Motion controller. The first step is to use the ISO aperture and shutter speed on your camera to get a test image that's in the right ballpark. Once you're satisfied with your camera settings, change your camera shutter speed to bulb mode. Now set that same shutter speed in Rhino Motion and take a test shot. If you want a longer shutter speed than what your camera will allow, then Rhino Motion will let you go up to shutter speeds of two minutes. So experiment with that, and when you do, use this to take your test shot. In Rhino Motion, exposure, duration, and playback are all linked together. So if you know you're shooting a subject that will move over the course of three hours, you can set that right away in duration, and watch your playback update automatically based on your exposure. On the other hand, if you know you need a 10 second clip for your edit, you can set 10 seconds in your playback and watch your duration adjust automatically. A faster exposure will allow more frames in a shorter amount of time, so you might play with your exposure if you need a longer clip in less time. Now, just like in other modes, we set our in and our out point, and we can test each of those. Now, by default, the origin is on operator's left. That's zero inches. So if you want the camera to move from right to left, we can switch these numbers so that the out point is at zero. Ramp does the same thing here as it does in other modes. It's that gradual ramp up to speed and that gradual deceleration on the other end. We can set that and then we hit start. The camera moves to the end point and we press go to begin. In advanced time lapse, we don't have to start the camera shooting before starting the movement because Rhino Motion is using the shutter release cable to trigger the camera. Here again, we can press the wheel to pause the movement and hit the back button to return to the menu. There are a couple of settings in Rhino Motion that may need to be adjusted for your camera setup. Let's take a look. First, we choose our slider, and this is how Rhino Motion knows where to find both ends of the slider after only calibrating one end. Motor location describes where is the drive shaft. So when the carriage brake is facing towards you, then the drive shaft is on your right. If you're changing rails and when you put it back together, you find that your drive shaft is on the left, you don't have to take it all apart again. You can come in and change this setting. Edge buffer is for when you have a wide camera rig and you're afraid that it will bump the motor before the carriage gets to the end of the slider. You can add an inch or two or three of margin using this setting here so that your camera never bumps the motor. Camera is where you set your camera's brand and this is used when triggering time lapses. So if you're shooting advanced time lapse with a Canon camera, like we are here, we set our mode to Canon. FPS stands for frames per second, 
and this does not change anything about how Rhino Motion shoots or what it captures. What it does change is in advanced time lapse mode, Rhino Motion uses this to calculate how long the resulting clip will be after it's put into your edit. So if you know the frame rate of your finished edit, you can set that here, and in advanced time lapse mode, you'll get accurate calculations for your finished clip duration. Sounds can of course be turned on or off, and in the future there may be firmware upgrades, and those will happen here. There's your walkthrough of both simple time lapse and advanced time lapse, as well as the settings. If you have any questions, contact support at rhinocg.com.